Hi, I'm Melinda Music, the speech language pathologist at Paintsville Independent Schools, and I work with kindergarten through 12th grade students. The title of my grant is So to Speak, and I have recruited Miss um, Miller and Mrs. Puckett, who are resource teachers, to help out with this project. I'm Frankie Puckett. I'm the resource teacher at the elementary for pre-K through sixth grade. I'm Jordan Miller. I'm the resource teacher at the middle school for grades seven and eight. The area of focus on this project was to uh, promote the students' communication skills with each other and myself. Um, they learned how to answer reflective questions to assess their skills and to perfect it as well. The goal for them was to continue to improve their communication skills, which is speech language fluency and voice throughout the project while learning a new life skill that they may find as a new hobby, talent, and or means of entrepreneurship later in life. For my sixth grader, it was to work with fractions, being able to cut a certain length, three quarters, one and a half, and be able to add what they needed to or subtract what they needed to. A math standard for the middle school is to be able to convert measurements from different units and then making those measurements and cutting them themselves. But why did I choose this research topic? Uh, I chose this research topic because many kids and adults sit around on their cell phones or iPads. They have a lot of screen time to pass time. It's very difficult nowadays to find a um, seamstress to make alterations, especially in our rural hometown, mostly because learning to sew and operate a sewing machine is a thing of the past. I want my students to know that it is never too late to learn, and I want them uh, to see this belief in, in practice because I've actually taught myself with this project how to sew and embroider. I'm working on that as well. Melinda's been teaching me. Some of the equipment that we've gotten have were needles and thread and fabric. Uh, Melinda can tell you about the Embrilliant Stitch Art Artist. The Embrilliant Stitch Artist program is an embroidery program that you can use in order to create and design your own embroidery um, designs instead of having to buy them. Like for instance, if we wanted to create a design that would be school related to put on a shirt, we could go in and create our own and be able to embroider that actual design and it be our own, so to speak. Um, we also purchased two different um, sewing slash embroidery machines with the kit that comes with all of the materials that we need so that we didn't have to uh, take them back and forth between schools when working with the middle school students and our upper grade elementary. Um, and we had fabric, of course, in the books and things like that that we needed. Jordan. A traditional practice like sewing becomes new and engaging for the generation of students that is rarely exposed to the step-by-step -step process of man manufacturing clothing. So this is just, we wanted to get the kids into it and understand how to do this for themselves. All right, so teaching kids to sew and embroider is fun and easy. Unless you're old like me and it's a little bit harder skill, but they learn valuable skills such as learning to save money, fixing old clothes that they've not wore or has been torn, and to customize and create new trends and fashions. The participants in this study was, were basically sixth through eighth graders. However, our plan for next year is to incorporate ninth through twelfth graders as well. Um, and then here's our student teacher zone. This is when we were learning how to design an applique. We used our Brilliance uh, software to create the design. And what, when you're doing an applique, you're using fabric plus uh, the embroidery thread. But you go ahead and you design, you put your design into the machine and it goes ahead and tells you what to do. Like all you do is just push a button and you sit and watch. When it's finished sewing on the fabric, then you have to take those little scissors and cut those small designs out when doing an applique, which was very difficult. Okay. And then once you're finished with that part, you put it back in and it will actually do the embroidery around the fabric. Uh, here are some pictures of 
this is welcome to COVID-19 while we're out of school. We decided to make some masks for my kids at home. And Maggie on the left there is um, sporting her camouflage mask. And uh, I mentioned to her about making, helping me learn to sew and make these. And that's all I heard. So she helped me. We had to uh, measure out the fabric, get the elastic cut just right. You had to have seven inches of elastic. And I think it was nine by seven pieces, two pieces of fabric. And then sew those pieces together inside out until all the way around until you got um, like an inch and a half, two inches. And then you'd have to pull it out, flip it inside out, and then go back over the mask two times. And it required actually putting pins in there to make these creases. But I found that using an iron and making the creases myself was easier than using pins. So I just ironed the creases in really well. And then we, we actually sewed the, the sides of the mask up. So that worked good for us. There's also a picture of a key fob that we made using um, ribbon and our embroidery machine. Of course, we use Maggie's name uh, to make that as an example. And we plan to use those later later on. Of course, we have a kid's mask there too with my son. And the different types of stitches um, are basically your running stitch and back stitch. I use those a lot on the mask um, because you do have to use the back stitch in order to um, get the elastic sewn into the fabric well enough because it is thicker. Then you have the stem stitch, lazy daisy stitch, and cross stitch. Uh, we're, there's some of the basic stitches that we use in, in, you know, in a variety of needlework and sewing projects. Before we got out with this COVID-19, my kids, we had actually planned on designing a shirt. So we had gone through and we were reading the steps to learn how to use the machine. They were deciding if they wanted to sew something on or if they wanted to do something more like the Kentucky embroidered shirt that Melinda and her students had made. Um, they were having to find the measurements of how big they wanted their applique, how they were going to do it, what color thread, and then answering all these questions in an essay format. I feel that the kids will really enjoy doing this type of activity. One, it gets them away from technology to a certain extent. I mean, they're using the embroidery machine, just different type of technology, but I think it will help them in the long run learn a lifelong skill. I was surprised at how well uh, the project did go, even though we ran out of time at, at school with, this, with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, my own daughter, who is a sixth grader, um, she was very uh, excited about learning. And we were both surprised at how easy the uh, operating the sewing machine was. We watched YouTube videos. We read directions in the books on how to thread um, the, the things and, and the actual machines and things like that. And we look forward to making many more projects together. And I, I look forward to making projects with Miss Puckett and Miss Miller and hopefully being able to fundraise for our special education department. If you have any questions, you can contact me at frankie.puckett at paintsville.kyschools.us. You can contact me at jordan.miller at paintsville.kyschools.us. And you can contact me at melinda.music at paintsville.kyschools.us. And thank you so much.